Tom Long, and our scenery this week is coming from the beautiful West Virginia State Park, Blackwater Falls. And as you can see over my shoulder, the scenery is just stunning. When Jesus was crucified, we are told that his mother and the disciple he loved were there. Mark added this, quote, some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the younger and of Joseph and of Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there, unquote. While each of the four gospels tells the story of what happened after Jesus' crucifixion, a little differently, they all agree on one thing. <laughs> Not one of the disciples wanted to be openly associated with Jesus after he had been crucified. Yet, Matthew tells us of Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, quote, quote, going to Jesus' tomb. Mark adds that the other Mary was the mother of James and Joseph and that Salome was also with them. <laughs> Sweet brother Luke backs the story up a bit and begins with, quote, the women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Jesus and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment, unquote. Being the kind of guy who wanted to give credit where it was due, Luke went on to add, Quote, it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles, unquote. And as we come to our most theologically minded gospel, John mentions only Mary Magdalene. And the Bible makes clear that it was to these courageous and faithful women that the risen Christ first appeared. But for those of us who are neither women nor bold in our faith, it is encouraging to read on in this week's reading that these heroic women were not the only ones visited by the risen Christ. Let's talk about where the men were. The Sabbath, which had stretched from sunset on Good Friday to sunset on Saturday, was now over. The Jewish leaders, perhaps encouraged by their victory and having Jesus killed, might be emboldened to pursue his band of followers, if only they could find them. In this week's reading, John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31, we get a peek into where they were and what they were doing on Sunday evening. They had shut themselves up in a room because the Bible says that they feared the Jewish leaders. I think that with everything that had happened, it isn't really surprising that they would be afraid. So that is where Jesus finds them. He appears to them in their hidey hole. Twice, he reassures them with the words, peace be with you. As I read this, I find myself thinking that when I'm in danger or what I think is a dangerous situation, my fear is replaced with peace if I am aware that Jesus is with me. But one of the disciples wasn't there. Poor old Thomas was absent from the fellowship of fear. He didn't see Jesus. But the other disciples told him that they had. <laughs> like most of us, Thomas was slow to accept the strange news on their say-so. He insisted that he would believe it when he saw it. For reasons the Bible leaves to our imagination, Thomas is with them the next Sunday evening. Maybe he showed up with an open mind, hoping to find out if what they had told him was true. If someone told you, if I told you that it was true that Jesus had been raised from the dead, when you come, would you come to church to see if there was evidence to back that up? Would you look in our homeless shelters, our hospitals, Orphanage and schools in third world countries? Our local food and clothing banks? Those 
People who are building houses for Habitat for Humanity, would you come and see? Thomas came and Jesus showed up. Once again, he started with, peace be with you, and then turned to Thomas. He said, put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. A more literal translation from the Greek would be, don't be unbelieving, but believing. Jesus tells Thomas to move from being open-minded about the resurrection to being convinced, and based on that, placing his trust in Jesus. But the theme of these three appearances, first to the faithful and courageous women, then to the scared and hiding men, and third to the skeptical but open Thomas, If Jesus had only appeared to those heroic women, we might question whether he was faithful to his followers. But the theme here is that he is there for all who have eyes to see, women or men, weak or strong. And when he appeared to men without Thomas, remember what he commanded them. He said, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. He doesn't come to us only to bring us peace. He comes to us to send us out into the world, to break us free from our hidey holes and courageously go out into the world living the Jesus life, the life of justice, mercy, and faithfulness, the life of love for God and the life of love for one another. One of the great things about Jesus which I wish were more true of us in the church. One of the great things about Jesus is that he meets us where we are, blesses us, and then works in us to make us a blessing to others. God of mercy, we confess that we do not always live our lives free of anger, sadness, fear, or other feelings that might shut us up in our hidey holes. We invite you to help us to overcome our limitations, to guide us as your people, to lead Christian lives that invite others to learn about Jesus our Savior and all his teachings. It is in his name we pray, amen.